Welcome to CMMC Unacknowledged, where we answer the unanswered questions that were asked during the monthly CMMC AB town hall meetings. My name is Todd Stan. I'm the regional sales manager for all things CMMC at eTactics. And as always, I'm joined by Ty Wittenberg. Ty is the senior information assurance manager at Rain Associates. Welcome, Ty. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. All right. Our question for this episode is... DOD recently announced that CMMC would be moving from the Office of Acquisition and Sustainment to the Office of the Chief Information Officer. So, Ty, what are your thoughts on this change? So, the change of the Office of the Chief Information Officer pull, puts it solely and directly under the Department of Defense, right? Uh, and to be honest with you, we've been having conversations uh, sitting in town halls, both you and I with the CMMCAB, and it's always deferred back to the Department of Defense what happens. I think, you know, if I put it back into my uh, military time of uh, different types of command, centralized command under the DOD, uh, I think it makes sense. I think based off of the different initiatives and programs that the DOD has going on, uh, having this fall under the CMMC. Uh, or having CMMC fall under DOD CIO um, is a beneficial change. Uh, nothing against sustainment and acquisition. Uh, however, um, you know, as as our cyber defense, national cyber defense, uh, goes through its maturation, it's critical that um, there's probably some centralized voice and command, and I think it removes a lot of the ambiguity that the organization seeking certification. And, and for some uh, cases, uh, uh, registered provider organizations or, or certified third party assessors were feeling the frustration in like there wasn't a direct path to answers. Absolutely. I think, you know, Matt, Matt Travis had to say a lot of times in the AB town halls that I can't speak on behalf of the DOD, but my feeling on this is, you know, um, and I think that having the CIO now responsible for the program, uh, communicating with the DIB, communicating with the ecosystem for CMMC is going to uh, improve that communication, as you said, you know, that it wasn't there before, that now it seems like that avenue for communication is open. Um, and so I want to kind of pivot and, and talk about what happened um, recently in, in early February. The DOD CIO held a, a town hall style call um, to address, you know, the, the change from ANS over to um, the Office of the CIO, and, and they really started by taking a step back. And, you know, CMMC is a, a cog in the wheel of what DOD CIO is doing for mm -hmm. cybersecurity throughout the DIV. So I know that you had an opportunity to, to watch that presentation as well. Do you want to kind of walk us through? They had a placemat of, you know, some of the other aspects of what they do to, you know, ensure that there is appropriate cybersecurity implementation within the DIV. Yeah, so they had a four-point placemat, uh, which uh, for those who didn't uh, sit in on uh, the uh, CIO's um, town hall uh, was really beneficial. Um, even if you're not a cybersecurity operator, I think you could get some value out of it. Um, I definitely know that if, if you have some uh, uncertainty, your uh, registered provider organization could definitely help you with this. But what they hit on were, were four cornerstones, one around cyber threat information and intelligence sharing in the defense industrial base. So that's the first one. So I'm a member of a group called InfraGuard, which is a public-private partnership with the FBI, right, around this exact same cyber threat information and intelligence sharing to help improve, you know, uh, uh, people's awareness of what's going on out there, whether it be through nation state, uh, whether it be through hacktivists, whatever it may be. But the, the value here is uh, through the DOD, the DOD uh, CISO and, and the Defense Industrial Base uh, CS program, it's a voluntary program just like the InfraGuard is, that is a sharing platform around threats that are going on, uh, impacting particular verticals in the DIB uh, or all of the DIB for that matter. Uh, and which is a crucial part of a uh, organization's information security program as as they are as they are uh, navigating in the uh, defense industrial base or trying to get CMMC uh, level two certification. You need to have 
some form of threat information. There's paid versions, there's free versions, but this collaboration with the DOD means that you're getting access to information um, at a higher level that they're impacting, that their analysts are taking a look at and believe are the most critical that you should take as well too, so that you can tune your controls to uh, better safeguard your environment. Uh, if you go around the place, Matt, the next thing they talked about is around incident reporting. Now, incident reporting has been critical ever since DFARS uh, 252, 204, uh, 7012 came out. And that was the one that said that uh, if you had an incident, you had 72 hours in which to uh, respond. Well, the DOD under, under this particular program with the DOD CISO and that uh, CS program, along with um, several other organizations that spoke, uh, DCSA, which, you know, is tied to CISA as well, too, um, gives you some tips and tools on how you should report it, where you should report it, which is information that you weren't necessarily getting from the sustainment and acquisition website, right? Uh, if you go around that uh, tablet, the next one would have been on the cybersecurity technical assistance and collaboration. So this is a resource for organizations if they're trying to go it on their own uh, with their own internal IT staff, uh, or if they're looking to partner with um, other organizations uh, to help them get through this. So this, once again, this is a, um, uh, a source that offers valuable DOD collabor collaboration with the defense industrial base, right? Uh, and, and helps with maintaining relationships, hosting events like, um, uh, <laughs> not to use a cyber term, but if you think like the big geeky ones, uh, the consumer electronics that was out in Las Vegas, well, the DOD puts on something similar to that, uh, but for cybersecurity and the DIM which is pretty nice and, and typically free uh, for uh, organizations seeking certification. And then the last thing on the placemat was around DIB security requirements and assessment mechanisms. And so uh, this was just them talking about additional resources uh, to help people uh, assist the defense industrial base or organizations seeking certification and understanding the regulatory requirements. Because there's, there's many, right? Uh, the federal acquisition regulations, uh, the DFARS, there's, there's just a ton of moving parts around oversight, around compliance, um, that if you're in this space, you need to be, you need to be performing. So let me ask you a, a point on that last category, right? And that's, that's really where I've spent most of my research on, on CMMC. And you look at some of these DFARS numbers, 252, 204-7019 and 7020. Um, so those are current requirements, correct? Yes. And so is it is it 7019 that requires the SBRS score to be uploaded in, into the um, SPURS program? To the procurement integrated portal and into the supplier yep, risk score, most definitely. And then is 7020 the ability for um, DCMA or DIPCAC to, to come and audit that assessment that's uploaded into their system? Yeah, so everybody is, um, once you've loaded that in, right, everybody is, um, subject to any potential spot check, whether that be from the DIBCAC and depending on the relationship you have, if you're doing something with one of the branches of the armed forces, the Air Force, the Army, um, the Navy, they could come and spot check your supply score as well too. And so the one that's in um, your rulemaking or a review right now is the 7021. Uh, and that is what brings the certified third party assessor organizations into um, you know, the, the place of what currently is, is supported by DIPCAC on a, a spot check basis, but now it's um, you know, a assessment that's done prior to contract award to ensure that the uh, NIST SP800-171 uh, practices are implemented correctly. Um, and I guess that also for a level one, <clears throat> excuse me, level one would, would bring the requirement for an annual self-assessment, correct? That's right. An annual self-assessment, CMMC certified third-party assessors. I don't know if it's an augmentation as much as it is a clear strategy by the Department of Defense to say, Lottie Dottie, everybody uh, that's level two needs to be uh, inspected. Uh, we don't have a large enough, even though the DIBCAC is looking to hire professional assessors as well too, 
we don't have enough in the DIBCAC to make that happen because they're spread out as well too across, you know, DOE, the Department of Energy. I mean, they are assessing everything uh, for executive branch. So um, this is making sure that um, those folks in the defense industrial base that are going to be level two uh, that need that certification or level three for that matter uh, are being assessed um, by third party assessors as well as the DIBCAC. And my, my last question that I heard on that, that DOD CIO call that I wanted to get your opinion on, it sounded to me that when rulemaking is complete, um, this requirement, CMMC, DFAR 7021, will be a requirement in every contract that DOD um, you know, solicits. So that seems to be a change from what the guidance was under CMMC 1.0, where there was a crawl, walk, run approach to implementing these requirements and, and gradually more and more contracts each year. What is your um, interpretation of, of what was stated on that DOD CIO call last week? Well, I think we've, so the DOD call brought it up. Uh, I think you and I have talked about it before as well too, Todd. You know, that crawl, walk, run model that was originally put in place took you all the way out to that's when everybody, if you needed to have maturity level three, maturity level five, and maturity level one, um, and I'm sorry I did it in that order, one, three, and five, two, and four, as everybody knows, were intermediary steps that you, you had a time frame in which to get there, right? Now, once it's passed and it becomes a regulation and it's in contract, it's mandated immediately. And that time frame has changed, right? So couple months back we were talking. So we're talking anywhere between the next five to 20 months. Um, if these are passed relatively quickly, um, they will become part of the uh, procurement language in contracts or in requests for uh, proposals. And, and you'll have to, you'll have to attest that you're meeting these. I think that might be a wake up call for, you know, a lot of people that were thinking this was a longer term implementation. Um, so certainly if, if if this is the impotence you needed to, you know, get started on documenting your cybersecurity program, um, reach out to somebody like Ty and the team at Ray and Associates. And I'm sure that they can um, help expedite the documentation so that when this rulemaking happens, uh, you'll be in a good position to reach out to a C3PO and, and get your certification assessment completed. Um, as always, Ty, I appreciate your insight on this, and, and thank you again. Thank you.